Coaching, Where Are They Now? With your host, Diane Hart. Now, here's Diane. Good evening. Welcome to Where Are They Now? I am your host, Diane Hart. My special guest this evening is Mr. Chuck Strong. Good evening, Mr. Strong, and how are you today? Uh, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for joining me. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you. We're going to get started. Where are you and what are you doing? So tell me a little bit about where are you from? I'm from Selma, Alabama, a little place about this big. And if you blink a couple of times, you missed it. <laughs> I happen to know where Selma, Alabama is. I'm from East Selma. What schools did you attend? R.B. Hudson High, attended uh, Tipton High. And then when I moved to L.A., I finished up here in L.A. How old were you when you got started in the music industry? Well, you know, when I was in school, I used to always wanted to be like Joe Tex, Elvis Presley, Tyrone Davis, Johnny Taylor, Al Green, you know, those are, and Bobby Bland. Those are some of the people that I really wanted to be like. Those were people you want to be like. When did you get started actually singing? I got started back in Selma. I got started out with a group called the Oasis Band, and uh, it was managed by the late Ace Anderson. And after I got started with the Oasis, I moved to Montgomery, Alabama, and I was the lead singer for Bobby Moore and the Rhythm Aces out of Montgomery, Alabama. And then after that, I moved to Los Angeles. And after you moved to L.A., did you continue to sing with bands or you kind of ventured out on your own? When I got here, I hooked up with Marsha McQueen Jr. And I also hooked up with the late Jimmy Lewis and the late Richard Kaysen, Leon Haywood. I got with the people here and then I started uh, moving up the ladder a little bit. I started, and that's when I really started uh, doing uh, recording. What was your first song you recorded? I thought it over. Did you write that song yourself? Yeah, and I wrote it because the song was actually true. When people see you trying to do good in life, they'll put stumbling blocks in your path, block you from getting to where you're trying to go. The song was like was was based on that. I thought it over. Yes, you did, right? <laughs> yeah, and all the lyrics was true. It was just the way I wrote it. That's the way it was. And that's what life was handing you at that particular time, huh? Yes. So let me ask you, did you write all of your music? No, I wrote some of it, but mm -hmm. most I co-wrote with other artists. Jimmy Lewis, Rich Kaysen, Marshall McQueen Jr., Hence Powell. I did a lot of writing with different people. So in the writing with other people, what did you do? Did you interject what was really happening in your own life at the time? Is that how you wrote most of your lyrics? Some of it was some of the things that was happening in my life. Was I'm looking at other people, what was going on in their life. Right. So let's kind of talk a little bit about you wrote a lot of music and you wrote in concert with some other people. Tell me a little bit about who you were writing with in collaboration with. I wrote with Marsha McQueen Jr., Winston Williams, Richard Kaysen, Jimmy Lewis, Hens Powell. Most of my writings I co-wrote. A few I did on my own. I understand that there's been over 7 million views on a couple of your songs. I've actually gone out and researched you. So I do know a little bit about you. I'm trying to dig in the current, but I want to kind of go backwards. And that's why I'm being so nosy, right? And asking you all kinds of questions. Yes. I like the fact that you did co-write with others. Did you sing most yes. of your songs with other people too? I have sung with other people. It's just myself. Are you on the road now? Are you retired? What are you doing right now? Right now, I'm, 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 I'm in the process of finishing up my new CD. Mm. I'm going right now, so I, I think I got about one or two more songs I got to finish. Uh -huh. and I'm going to come with the uh, whole entire CD because right now I just have the single out and it's a remix. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take a break and then we'll come right back and we will continue with our interview. We're going to listen to Cash Money, okay? some cash on you yeah let me take you shopping to some of your expensive stores anything you see you like girl grab it and it's yours pick you out some platinums diamonds and jewelry too ain't nothing in this store pretty girl too good for you 
spend some cash on you. Cash money. Cash money. Can I spend some money on you? Let me spend some cash on you. Cash money. Sweet thing. Cash money. Let me take you shopping. Shopping for your children too. Anything you see they need, girl, I'll buy it for you. No matter what it is or how much it's gonna cost. Cause when it comes to you and your kids, I'll do anything for y'all. You are the kind of girl that deserves the best things in life. I'm the kind of man that's willing to pay the price. Can I spend some money on you? Let me spend some cash on you. Cash money. Mm -hmm. Cash money. Can I spend some money on you? Let me spend some cash on you. Cash money. That's what I want to do for you, cash girl. Money. I want to take you and get your hair done. Get your nails done. Pedicure, and I wanna buy you a nice purse. Do you like Michael Kors, or do you like Gucci, Chanel, Coach, Louis Vuitton? Whatever you like, baby, I'm gonna get it for you. You are the kind of girl that deserves the best things in life. I'm the kind of man that's willing to pay the price. Can I spend some money on you? Let me spend some cash on you. Cash money. Yeah, the lady right there with the beautiful cash eyes. Money. Can I spend some money on you? Let me spend some cash on you. Cash How about you, darling? Money. Yeah, you with the black tights on. Money. Can I spend some money on you? Let me spend some cash on you. Say, beautiful lady. No, not you. Cash money. Yeah, you. Yeah, you, baby. Can I spend some money on you? Let me spend some cash on you. The beautiful lady right there with the tattoos on her. Oh, baby. Welcome back to Where Are They Now? My guest is Mr. Chuck Strong. Thank you so much for being here with me this evening. I greatly appreciate it. That is a bad song. Now, what inspired Cash Money? I was in Selma, Alabama, visiting. I was out at Wendy's restaurant with my cousin. My cousin, he's single, and he was just talking to this young lady inside the uh, restaurant. So he said, hey, he said, I really like you. And he said, uh, I want to come back out to see you. She said, well, you can come back, but when you come, bring me something. And he said, well... What do you want me to bring? The lady <laughs> told him direct. She said, bring me some cash money. So, <laughs> so that inspired cash money. I did listen to the song. <laughs> it's a good song. There's some good lyrics in that song. That's what inspired cash money. <laughs> <laughs> so did you start writing on a napkin as soon as she said, bring me some money? Right to the car and started writing. Have you written for other people? Songs for them to sing? I didn't really write the songs for someone else to, to do. But, you know, Lil Milton did uh, one of my songs called You Left a Gold Mine for a Gold Digger. Yeah. <laughs> David did one of my songs, Don't Make Me Choose Between You and My Wife. Ooh. They have done some of my music. So uh, there are some other people who sang some of your songs. Yes. Hey, that's really a good thing. You've collaborated with some others on any albums or CDs? Because I know you've collaborated in the writings, but have you sung some songs with some other people? I did a duet with, with my son. My, uh, with my son. Uh -huh. My son, uh, Dr. Christian Strong. It was called um, Stolen Love. Did you write that song? Yes, I did. I can understand. See, that's what happens when you have a lot of songs. It was me, I'd have one. All right. <laughs> so you sang that song with your son. What inspired that song? Back in the day, I think I heard Johnny Taylor do a song called, I can't think of it, but Johnny, I got the idea from Johnny Taylor. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, Lauren, but, um, you know, uh, wake up, little darling, it's time to go home. Um, I can't think of the name of it, but that's where I get stolen love from, from Johnny Till. That means I'm going to have to listen to every single one of your songs. I've listened to quite a few. I've got to go out and find that song. Well, you're going to be listening a long time because I have a lot of songs. I know. <laughs> 14 albums. That's a lot of songs. I've been around for a while, but I'm, I'm, I'm still young. I know that's right. So are you entertaining today? I mean, are you still performing? I'm getting ready to do a show here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. uh, in September, I'm going to be doing my birthday celebration here. Are some other entertainers joining you for your birthday celebration? Uh, I'm trying to figure out who am I going to bring in to celebrate it uh, with me. So I haven't gotten that far yet because I've just started uh, putting it together. I'm here in Los Angeles. I know that's right. September will be here before we know it. We're going to take our second break. And what we're going to do is we're going to listen to Rock That Man in the Boat. I've listened to it. I'm going to listen to it in just a moment. And we're going to talk a little bit about that song on the other side of our break. Rock That Man in the Boat. Ooh, fellas, this is a true story. It happened to me, and I'm not complaining. I'm just explaining. Listen up. I spent the night at my baby's house. Her kids were gone. We could finally be alone. We took a shower, played around. I knew her love was coming down. And then she laid across the bed She backed it up mm, I smacked it up The way she moaned made me feel like a king There's something new She said, I want you to do If you really want to make a woman scream You can stroke it every minute Make it talk, stand up in it But if you want to keep our love afloat Rock that man in the boat, babe That little man in the boat, yeah mm. She said, I'll teach you just how to do it right I'll show you where you can find my magic spot I saw that look in her eye If I give this thing a try <laughs> Don't tell nobody if I do <laughs> I rocked it left, uh, I rocked it right her body trembled from her bottom to her top I rocked it up, I rocked it down I said, who's your daddy? She said, you, but don't you ever stop You can stroke it every minute, make it talk, stand up in it But if you want to keep our love afloat Rock that man in the boat, babe That little man in the boat, mm-hmm Rock that man in the boat, babe That little man in the boat, yeah mm -hmm. I rocked it up, I rocked it down I rocked it in, ooh, and all around I rocked the man in the boat, yeah That little man in the boat, babe Fellas I've been working too hard. I've been sweating and grinding, getting my hips all out of place. All I had to do was take my time. Stroke it every minute, make it talk, stand up in it. But if you want to keep her love afloat, rock that man in the boat, babe. That little man in the boat, mm -hmm. rock that man in the boat, fellas. That little man in the boat mm -hmm. Ooh, She backed it up Her body trembled Ooh, I smacked it up She started to moan I rocked it in and out And up and down Now who's your daddy? <laughs> Girls, tell the fellas what you like That man in the boat that's what they want. That's what they need. That's what they like. Now dive on in. That's what they need. That's what they like. Ooh. 
it up. I smacked it up. I rocked it in and out and up and down. Welcome back to Where Are They Now? And my guest is Mr. Chuck Strong. Listen, he says he's still young and he has lots of energy. He's going to be entertaining in September and he's putting together a new album. I understand you've done a remix of Rock That Man in the Boat. Let's talk a little bit about that song. Why did you choose that song for a remix? I chose that song for a, re a remix because I had that song out um, about 20 years ago. Was one of my um, best sellers. I tried to do a remix on it because I thought it needed a little bit more Southern soul added to it, music wide. That's why I did the remix on, on that particular song. So you put a little bit of cut on it with Southern soul for this new remix. Absolutely, I got a, I got a little bit farther to the left with it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Look, it is a bad jam. I did listen to it and it is a bad jam. I didn't see the remix when I was looking for it. So it has not been released yet? Or did it just get released? I, th I thought it said 2024. It's just been released about three weeks now. Okay. Social media sites, you know, uh, YouTube, uh, TikTok, uh, you know, whatever, but it's out there. It's well, let me ask you this. You have family, a wife and children? Absolutely. I have a beautiful wife and I have uh, two sons and two daughters. Did you go on the road a lot when you were singing? Absolutely. I've been on the road a lot. I mean, you know, a few years ago, I was out pretty much every other week on shows with The Whispers, uh, Tyrone Day, Bobby Bland, Johnny Taylor, Marvin Cease, you name it. I've been on shows with pretty much everybody. That's Bobby wonderful. Matt, can't leave him out. Oh, okay. No, don't want to leave anybody out. Because they're going to be watching your video. and be like, he sang with me, but he didn't mention me. Tell them, don't charge it to your heart. Charge it to the head. Just couldn't remember, right? You sang with a lot of people. So now when you go back on the road this time, are you going to put together some concerts with some of those very same people who are still entertaining today? Well, I'm just hoping uh, I get some calls and, and just be on the show with whoever. I mean, it don't matter who I'm on, I'm on the show with. Just so I get the call and get out and, you know, and, and, uh, and be productive. Which definitely makes sense. We all want to be productive. You have so much to offer. What would you tell these new, young, up-and-coming, aspiring singers and entertainers today? What kind of advice would you give them? First, I would give them the advice to, um, when you are doing your music, you need to know about the business end of it. Because, see, if you write a song, and if you don't have your business together, you know, you you have people that take your, your writers from you. They'll take your publishing. For the young people, I'm going to say, make sure you take care of your business first. And then when you take care of your business, never give up. You can give out, but never give up. Because, see, once you give up, it's over. But as long as you're fighting, it's not over until you stop fighting. And I'm a winner, and I don't stop. I keep going. When it gets too tough for the average person, it's just right for me. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> what you say is just right. Is there something else you'd like to impart to these young folk? Because I think they kind of have it slightly twisted. I don't think they realize how important the business aspects 
are to the entertainment field. Another thing that I'm I'm going to say to the young people, mm-hmm. how much music that you want to do or how you inspired about it, the key to the life is education. I'm going to say to the young people, the first thing you do, you make sure you get a good education and or a trade or something because the way life is now, the way the world is now, if you don't have an education or some type of a trade or something, you 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 gonna be lost because it, that just the way it is. You 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 gotta have an education. So that's absolutely necessary to get an education, and we need them to understand that. So many drop out of school, think that oh, I'm entertaining now. I really don't need to finish school. I don't need a degree. I don't even need my diploma because hey. There's many people out there who didn't get it, but your advice to these young people is stay in school, get a good education. See, the young people, you don't want, you, you don't want to uh, go to the uh, jail and be incarcerated because you don't want to get a felony on your record. I see a lot of kids don't understand that once you be incarcerated and get a felony on your record, that stays with you. You can't get that. You can't get a proper job or anything. So. Make sure you do not go to jail under no circumstances. Stay away from jail. I know that's right. Absolutely, young people. I don't know if I ask you what inspired Rock the Man in the Boat. I can't remember that I asked you that. You didn't, but let me tell you, I didn't have anything to do with writing. (laughs) (laughs) Richard Case, Richard, (laughs) and he gave it to me and I sung it. I don't have anything to do with writing it or anything. I'm just the artist. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. You heard it. He doesn't want to own it, but he owned it because he sang it. <laughs> He's like, I didn't write it, <laughs> but I did sing it. <laughs> I, I can't understand why you don't want to own it. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you being totally honest about it. You like I'm being I'm being completely honest. That's the, <laughs> anything to do with that song. I'm I'm just the artist. Well, the song is a good song, even though you won't own it, and it's okay. <laughs> you sang it though, and you did a superb job on it. So, what can I say? I did listen to it. I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) He said, nope, I didn't write it. But you've written so many songs. So nobody would have known you didn't write the song if we were not talking about it tonight. People probably thought you wrote that song. I don't want everybody to know Richard Kaysen wrote that song. I won't be. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I can tell you this. Richard should be happy that you sang the song because it is a good song. And I understand that that song was a top seller, too. Absolutely, yes. I read that it was a top seller, so Richard was on to something. So Richard, thank you for the song. (laughs) I really enjoyed our conversation. Is there anything else you want to tell me or talk about before we go off? Yeah, you, I really appreciate being on your show, and I want to thank you for having me. Oh, I'm happy to have you. Where Are They Now is shown every Thursday night at 7.30 right here on Detroit Hot TV. And you'll get an opportunity to hear from Mr. Chuck Strong. A couple other things i like to ask you is, you're on all the social media platforms? Very much. I found you out on YouTube and you know, kind of dev into what was going on. But listen, you all, you can find Mr. Chuck Strong on any of the musical platforms. Be sure to listen to his remix. Now, this remix of Rock That Man in the Boat is are on your new CD. It will be on there. Yes. Sure. Do you have some new songs on there? Are you doing all remixes and just changing it some? Most of the song is original songs that I wrote or written with someone else. So they're not remixes, they're your original songs. Didn't quite do what you did to rock that man in the book, because I understand that is a complete, that's a remix. That means you added a little Southern Soul flavor to that one, huh? So what I did, I just changed the music. I, I, you know, I, I thought it needed a little bit more Southern Soul, you know? It's a good song, and I enjoyed it. So I want to say again, thank you very much for joining me. It's been my pure pleasure tonight to have you with us on Where Are They Now? I do have a show down in Tampa, Florida. 
and it's called The Opening Statement. I will tell you when I'm going to be airing your interview in Tampa Bay. You'll hear from me, and I'll let you know when I'm going to air your show on my station, which is The Opening Statement on Roku. I look forward to meeting you someday. Hopefully, I can get to California, or maybe you'll come into Florida or Detroit or some of these other cities where I will get an opportunity to meet you. So again, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Have a good evening. Detroit Hot Radio, WDHR, the heart and soul of Detroit music. We've got the formula that keeps you listening longer. Just play another hot hit. It's just that simple. Detroit 